I hear 16 days. So I think the message is saying something along the lines of Yum Yum's Bedlam comes out in 16 days, or something that means roughly the same thing. Now I'm a bit skeptical about this for a few reasons, but yeah, I guess we'll see in a couple weeks. And hopefully someone can figure out what it actually says. So I solved the mystery. Before figuring it out, I read several guesses, both in the YouTube comment and in other places where I shared the sound clip. I won't share everything that was guessed, but one of them that I thought was interesting was a comment that said they heard Wave a Downed Wire at 14th and Hayes. I thought this was kind of a silly guess, and it seems like the person who posted that comment actually deleted it after a while. But a couple other people said that they heard something similar, so I decided to investigate. Apparently Hayes is a road in the Detroit area, but I wasn't really interested in that yet. Instead, I looked up other words in the phrase, and I found Found this. Engine 5, we have a downed wire at 14 in Hayes. It's a stock sound effect. Oh. So when I was almost certain that I heard 16 days, it was in fact 14 in Hayes. <laughs> Honestly, even now, knowing what it says, I can still hear 16 days if I try. It's a pretty wild coincidence that what I heard happened to line up exactly with the original release date of the new album. It's kind of cool. So, to summarize, I no longer think this is a hidden message. ICP just wanted to have some additional noise added to the chaotic soundscape they created at the end here, and this is the clip they happened to add. And I assume Yummy and Bedlam is going to be delayed again. So yeah, this is kind of disappointing. A lot of people were excited that ICP seemed to be going back to the 90s with its hidden messages, but it turns out that this message is only as fulfilling as the message in It's Coming, and this one wasn't even meant to be a hidden message. I mean, you could try to draw some meaning from this, but I don't really think there was any thought put into it. Let me know if you have any theories about it, I guess. I'm happy we solved the mystery, though, and discovering a stock sound effect used is still kind of cool to me. So does this mean there isn't any new information in the album's outro? Well, there's also this sound effect at the end. So after finding that stock sound effect of the 14 and haze thing, I thought maybe I'd be able to find a source of this sound, but I had no luck. I actually looked through hundreds of stock sound effects of shovel noises, stabbing noises, cutting noises, mud noises, no luck. It's a pretty ambiguous noise, like I can't tell exactly what it's supposed to represent, and when I showed the sound to different people, many of them had different interpretations of what it was. That's why I was hoping to find some kind of title to the sound effect and hopefully get some insight of what it is. A few people I asked said it sounded like a flower pot being broken, saying that they think it's the yum yum flower escaping, with one person saying that the three sounds leading up to the last sound represent the three seeds of the yum yum flower sprouting. Personally, I think it sounds like someone using a shovel in some way. This last sound effect especially. The other three kind of sound like generic stabbing sounds. I think it's either someone killing the yum yum flower with a shovel, or even stabbing its roots to dig it up and maybe take it home. I think the music before the sound is meant to represent the flower luring someone toward it. The music is suddenly cut off by the sound effect, so it either stopped because the flower successfully lured someone into doing what it wants, or because someone overcame the temptation and killed the flower instead. Now I want to talk about the yum yum flower itself. None of this following stuff is really fully fleshed out or anything, but I did some research and learned some interesting stuff, so I thought I'd include it in this video. In Bewitching, Valen Jay says in his high-pitched ringleader voice, Come one, come all, witness, with your very own eyeballs, a verity only rumor to exist until now. Found within a dark, remote cavern, somewhere beyond the farthest reaches of the Orient. Her intense beauty is extremely enchanting, yet she's also the most dangerous, lethal plant known to man. Fine people feast your eyes upon the breathtaking yum yum's lure. So one theory I have is that the sound at the end of the album is the plant being dug up after being discovered in a cave really far away. I think Yum Yum's lure is what made someone decide to dig it up and take it with them to show people. I get that this is a bit of a stretch as it's probably just referring to the lure that entices people to smell it or whatever, but bear with me. So Bedlam is a place, scene, or state of uproar and confusion. And I think that Yum Yum Bedlam represents this flower's seed spreading and popping up all over. Uh, side note, Miriam Webster lists Circus as a synonym of Bedlam. I just thought that was a fun fact. Now based on the album cover, it seems like there's only one yum yum flower living in this weird vase pot thing, with three children that are pretty much connected to it. But when ICP first announced the album, Violent J said, The yum yum flower is a poison orchid tempting you. Should your loyalty be weak, you will pick the flower and you will die. Should your loyalty be strong, you will resist even smelling the flower and you'll keep walking home and be safe and sound. How's your loyalty? Look into yourself. Is it strong or are you dead? We'll see when a yum yum flower appears in your garden. So that leads me to believe that on the upcoming album, these flowers will appear all over the place. Back to the album cover. The vase or part or whatever has a Psychopathic Records logo on it. I know this is kind of just an aesthetic choice, but maybe it suggests that the wicked clowns are the ones who dug up the flower and put it in a pot. 
And now they take it from town to town, allowing the flower to spread its seeds around the neighborhood in order to test people's loyalty, helping the yum-yum flower in a similar way to how they help gather evil people for the great Malenko to punish in their song Halls of Illusions. That would make sense considering the flower is introduced by this ringleader voice at the beginning of the witching, trying to get people interested in it, even telling them to look at it, when the lyrics later reveal that looking at it is dangerous. This is just some speculation, let me know what you think. Side note, I don't believe that what's on the album cover is necessarily canon to what the flower actually looks like within the lyrics. I think it's possible that the flower isn't even ever put in a pot, and that's just how they decided to make it look nice with the black background, as drawing ground wouldn't really fit with the rest of the Joker's cards. Really, I don't think any of the album covers are exact representations of what the things look like within the songs. As an example, in the album Riddle Box, it never mentions an actual clown face like this coming out of the album's titular Jack in the Box. The liner notes just say that when the box opens up, you see a vision of God or fog seeping from the box and a vision of hell spawned from your own evil. Okay, one more thing, and this is something that I don't think anyone's really talked about yet. Violent J described the yum yum flower as an orchid two different times during the initial reveal of the character. He also made an offhand comment where he referred to his seeds as the seeds of the lotus, but I'm going to assume that was a mistake, as it was said in a much more casual way than the other two descriptions. Maybe he just had the word lotus on his mind for whatever reason. Anyway, so when I first heard this, I thought that it being an orchid was kind of strange. Like, it seems more like a Venus flytrap or some other kind of giant carnivorous plant, given how it bites people's heads off and even has hands that look like smaller Venus flytraps. But recently I researched orchid flowers a bit, and it actually makes a lot of sense that Yum Yum is an orchid. So lots of flowers are brightly colored and smell nice in order to get bees or birds or whatever to pollinate them, but orchids are specifically known for being more deceptive than lots of other flowers, with certain types mimicking the appearance of female bees in order to get male bees to have sex with them, allowing the flower to spread its pollen and repopulate itself, sometimes just using the bee and not even giving any nectar in return. So this sexually deceptive nature of the orchid seems very similar to how the yum yum flower appears to mimic the appearance of a human female face in order to lure people toward it. Now of course I don't think there's a one to one connection here, like I don't think the yum yum flower is some kind of succubus or something that lures people to have sex with it, and it seems the yum yum's mimicry is more about eating people and getting nutrients than repopulating itself. But I thought the connection to actual orchids was interesting, and making the yum yum an orchid is certainly a more unique idea than the typical man eating plant thing. Now with all this orchid stuff, of course it's possible that ICP themselves didn't actually think of any of this and they're just throwing out flower related words that they know. As an example, the most scientific sounding thing that Violent J said about the flower was about its three seeds, where he said, These are the kids of yum yum, the seeds of yum yum. That's what flowers do, they have seeds that come off them and grow more flowers. Either way, I think it's interesting to analyze this stuff. I want to look at a couple of things they said about the flower in the song Bewitching. The pollen wipes your brain clean of all rationale. The very second you register the softness of her petals, terror ignites as a nectar, poison. Snakes through your body, filling every vein. She feeds on the living. Her job is not to kill you, but to keep you alive. As she feasts, she crushes your skull. Its innards fall down her throat. The pollen of orchids doesn't really float in the air like almost every other flower that has pollen. In fact, people with pollen allergies can even smell orchids without worrying about it causing any reactions. Well, this is some kind of big, scary, man-eating orchid, so I'll assume its biology is just a little bit different than all other orchids. Second, nectar is a sugary fluid that plants secrete, and it's usually used to encourage pollination. Many plants give nectar to bees, basically as a reward for helping them pollinate. Now, as I said earlier, certain types of orchids choose to be deceptive instead, and just don't give bees nectar or anything. So it seems reasonable that the yum yum flower as an orchid will take things one step further and use nectar as a punishment. Now this isn't really an orchid thing, but apparently some plants actually do have toxic nectar, and it's kind of an anomaly, as nectar is generally supposed to be a good thing for insects. I thought that was interesting and worth mentioning. Now this last part. She feeds on the living, her job is not to kill you but to keep you alive. As she feasts, she crushes your skull, its innards fall on your throat. I'm a bit confused. Her job is not to kill you, but then she eats your head off? The chorus even says that she plans to kill you, so this line is pretty contradictory. I guess it could be seen as a connection to how orchids don't kill bees, but instead just use them. I don't know. I just thought I should mention that. And I think that's all I have to say. Sorry if this video was a bit all over the place. Maybe the science stuff and the hidden message stuff should have been two different videos. I don't know. I just wanted to get this stuff out there and get people thinking about it. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, I plan to do more in the future, but now that I've done two in a row, I kind of want to focus on some other stuff for a little bit. I want to thank everyone who watched the original video, I've never really done a video like that before and the reception was a lot more positive than I expected. Most of your comments were really nice and it was cool to see people theorizing what the message meant. So yeah, let me know what you think of all this, and let me know what you think the stabbing at the end of the album is supposed to represent. Thanks for watching. Bye.